Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, August the 30th, 2018. Benningangle.us, free site, gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Let me also add here today, because it's important for purposes of this video. Understand, I'm not paid by media outlets who are hoping to profit off boxing, right? I'm not a pundit who is paid by any entity that has a vested interest in profiting off boxing. So understand, my agenda is simple, right? I get paid by whoever Google allows to advertise in my videos, Google or YouTube, right? That's dependent on the clicks in terms of the people clicking the thumbs up on the video. That's how I get paid. So my agenda here is clear, right? It's to try to speak what I believe is the truth on boxing. It's not to support any fighter or to convince you that any fighter is honest, right? While I want to see the sport of boxing thrive from a fan perspective, when I'm talking about bets, I'm just trying to beat the casino. When you're judging the comments, because I know there are many people out there who are going to disagree with the takes expressed in this video. When you're judging comments from pundits, you need to ask yourself, what interest does the pundit have in supporting the fighter that he's predicting will win the fight, right? If I'm shilling for a media outlet that wants to see a certain fighter continue to be a cash cow, then my view might not be as objective as the view of someone who simply wants to pick the winner of an event. Now let's get into two big fights in particular, but first remember the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion <clears throat> from a complete stranger online. Now, let's just say all of gambling is risk assessment, right? If you drink and drive, then the odds of you having a car accident increase. Right? Your insurance rates should increase. If they don't, then somewhere out there is a mispricing. Let's talk about two big mispricings in two big fights. I believe gamblers can take advantage of. Right first, and I've spoken about this fight in other videos, but I'm shocked. But as of today, Thursday, August the 30th, 2018, the odds still have Canelo as a plus 130 underdog. Right? Plus 130. Slight underdog against Golovkin, a fighter who, my eyes told me, won the first fight. Well, let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. In my opinion, Canelo should have been a much bigger underdog. Much bigger. I view taking Canelo at these odds as dangerous. I view the plus 130 as a mispricing. Hope I'm clear on that. Let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. Understanding that certain things change everything. They change everything. Right? The world is different today than it was before the first fight. Here's what we know. And I, you need to separate what you know from what you don't know. Right? Don't worry or 
care about optics, about politics, about image. We're just doing a hard risk assessment. After all, it's our money. We want to beat the casino. Hey, the casino is trying to take our money. They're not trying to be our friend. Figure out who your friends are. Here's what we know. And I believe this changes everything. We know that Canelo, since the first fight, has failed two drug tests for clenbuterol. We know that. The Canelo camp has acknowledged that. Right? We know he failed two drug tests for clenbuterol. We don't know. We don't know how long Canelo has been taking clenbuterol. Folks, we, we simply don't know. That's an unknown. So, there is a possibility, and neither you nor I know how big it is, that this is the first fight, the first, in quite some time that Canelo has entered the ring without the psychological or the physical edge that clenbuterol gives you. Might be the first time in a long time, folks. Now I understand there's a tainted meat narrative out there. <clears throat> Right? How much of that is PR? How much of that is an effort to cover up some facts? How much of that is an effort to keep you believing in a fighter who has made a lot of people a lot of money in the sport of boxing? Folks, neither you nor I know. In other words, here, the only thing we know with certainty, the only thing, is that Canelo failed two drug tests for clenbuterol. Right? It was so serious that he gets suspended for six months. Right? That we know. Now, with this level of uncertainty, Canelo should be going off. Right? At at least a two to one underdog. I'm going to take a guy who just failed multiple drug tests, multiple, against a fighter who officially got a draw against him. <laughs> officially got a draw against him. Let's say you believe the first decision, right? I don't. I thought Golovkin won the fight. But let's say you believe the first decision. If these two guys are competitive with each other, competitive, and then one guy goes out there and fails two drug tests, how on God's green earth is the guy who failed the drug test just a plus 130 underdog? That doesn't make sense to me. Now let me just say this. I personally believe the best bet on the board, and I've said so. Here is the under 11 and a half rounds in the Canelo Golovkin fight. Right? Under 11 and a half. Right? I believe someone gets knocked out. In part because I myself wonder how strong Canelo is going to be in the middle rounds of this fight. Right? Don't kid yourself. Everyone says, oh, this drug's just a diuretic, right? Why would any fighter take a drug that has no big impact on them? 
at the risk of losing millions of dollars in purses and future purses and reputation. Right? No, clenbuterol makes a big difference. That's why multiple fighters have been busted for clenbuterol. Right? The drug's not inconsequential. Understand, too, the tainted meat narrative. They're telling you that farmers, farmers, felt that clenbuterol would make such a big difference to their cows. <laughs> Think about it. Would change the quality of the beef produced by their cows to such a degree that the farmers then spent money to have this pharmaceutical in their livestock. Right? This is a serious drug. A guy has failed two serious drug tests since the first fight. He shouldn't be going off at a plus 130. Let me say this too. Understand, and I know this is going to hit people the wrong way. This is really nothing personal, right? I'd feel the same way if Golovkin failed two drug tests since the first fight, right? Fighters have a draw. One of the guys then fails two drug tests. Folks, that changes everything, right? Canelo's personality, his background, really have nothing to do with this risk assessment. We're just looking at facts. Any fighter who fails two drug tests after a draw shouldn't be a plus 130 in the rematch. He should be significantly higher. The way I'm playing this, and I fully expect Golovkin to win the fight, <clears throat> I'll be surprised, quite frankly, if Golovkin doesn't win the fight by knockout. The way I'm playing this is I like the under 11 and a half rounds. I'm going to hedge the play with Golovkin simply to win. Understand, the corollary of Canelo being mispriced is Golovkin's mispriced. Golovkin should be a much greater than 2-1 to one favorite to win the rematch. Because we don't know the extent of Canelo's drug use. I don't care what anybody says. Folks, I could either listen to a fighter's explanation or I could look at drug test results. I'm the kind of person who'll look at the drug test results. Right? You come into my office and you tell me that you failed two DUIs. Right? That the cops have busted you and have test results of two different DUIs. Then you look in my face and tell me Hey, man, I must have had a tainted drink. Who am I going to believe? The actual test results or your tainted drink story? As I look at you with a smile on my face thinking, hey, I need to support people riding in cars. Right? Let's just say that if I'm responsible for increasing your insurance rates, they're going to be increased. Let's talk about another fight. That quite frankly, I don't think people are thinking clear on. Right now, as I said before, some facts change everything. Now, this is just opinion. I'm a fan of George Groves. I love guys who take tough fights. And this guy has repeatedly. Right? He fought James DeGale. He fought Badu Jack. He fought Carl Frotch. He fought Chris Eubank. And understand, that Eubank fight, people thought very highly of Eubank at the time. Right? Don't be fooled by current public opinion. Look at the odds at which that fight went off at. Right? So George Groves, at times when the odds are favoring the other fighter. George Groves has taken those fights. In other words, this is that guy who only wants to beat champ if he can beat the other guys. He doesn't want to be a paper champ. He doesn't want the belt for political reasons. He's an actual warrior. I have the utmost respect for George Groves. 
but that doesn't matter here. Keep in mind, I've been online before the injury, before the Chris Eubank fight, saying that I felt George Groves would beat Callum Smith. Right? That's before the injury. Well, he gets injured in that Eubank fight. And by the way, I took Groves in that Eubank fight, as longtime subscribers here know. But Groves gets injured in that Eubank fight. One of his arms pops out of the socket. Think about that. He can't use it in the 12th round. This is even with a world-class super middleweight throwing heavy shots at him. He couldn't use the arm. Couldn't use it. Now you're telling me, just a few months later, I'm supposed to believe that George Groves, after surgery, while recovering from a shoulder injury that changes everything, you're going to tell me that George Groves is actually the favorite against unbeaten Callum Smith? Folks, that, that's, that's crazy. That's a mispricing. Could you imagine Steph Curry, who many people consider the best shooter in the NBA today, two-time MVP, can you imagine Steph Curry or LeBron James, a guy many consider to be the best player in the NBA today? Can you imagine seeing these guys lose an arm? The arm pops out in a big event. Pops out. The guy can't even raise his arm. Can't move his arm. Could you imagine those guys coming back a few months later? after surgery and then being favored against another world-class opponent? Could you imagine that? I can't. Right? The injury changes everything. You can't go to the window nostalgic in thinking about a healthy George Groves against James DeGale several years ago because now you know He's coming off injury. Folks, these shoulder injuries are so significant that Keith Thurman, who was riding atop the welterweight division, still hasn't made it back from a shoulder problem more than a year later, despite a long line of guys who want to fight him. Danny Garcia wants to fight him again. That's a big money fight. Sean Porter wants to fight him again. That's a big money fight. Errol Spence wants to fight him. Everyone wants to fight Keith Thurman. That shoulder has KO'd him. Now we know George Groves couldn't use his shoulder in the 12th round against Chris Eubank. We know that because we have two eyes. We don't have to rely on a narrative. You saw that. You saw it. He's there. The shoulder's just dangling, wasn't it? Right? Shoulders just dangling. You, you saw it. You knew he was badly hurt. You also know that the shoulder has been surgically repaired. He's post-surgery. Everything else is narrative. Right? George Groves telling the press, Oh, the shoulder feels fantastic. That's all a narrative. You don't know whether it's true or not. Hell, let's face it, these fighters are warriors. They don't even know if it's true or not. Right? A fighter always thinks he's the man. He can overcome adversity. You don't know about the truth until after the fight. Some of these fighters look back and they themselves are shaking their heads. Right, Larry Holmes admitted later he went into a fight with a contact lens in his eye. Think about how ridiculous that is. We now know Joe Fraser is blind in one eye for several of the biggest fights in history, including the thriller in Manila. 
These fighters are warriors. They take risks. You're a gambler simply trying to risk assess and bet. Right? I feel George Groves on his A game beats Callum Smith on his A game. I don't know if George Groves even has the capability so soon after surgery to be on his A game. Nor does anyone else. The idea of George Groves being a favorite a few months after surgery is ridiculous. It changes everything. Right? Just like if I heard that Golovkin's shoulder popped out and that he would need surgery. Right? If he then fights Canelo in a few months, I'd be there thinking, gee, I don't know about Canelo and Clembuterol. I don't know about Golovkin and his shoulder. I'd be changing the odds on both fighters. Here, in my opinion, because of the serious shoulder problem, George Grove should be an underdog in the fight, not the favorite, and a sizable underdog. Right? Callum Smith should be viewed as having at least a 60% chance of winning this fight. Right? Grove's shoulder injury changes my bet on the fight. Right now, I believe you have to have money on Callum Smith. You have to, and it's easy because he's the underdog. Right, dare I say, because Groves has a shoulder problem, and because I question whether he'll be able to use that arm to set up punches, the bet I'm thinking about now is the over. Hedged with Callum Smith simply to win. I agree. You're going to look out at the casino. Number one, you're not taking the favorite. You're taking the other guy. <laughs> right? Right? People are going to look at you. Then, you know, it's the over, right? There's a narrative out there that, hey, Callum Smith, inexperienced compared to George Groves, right? Callum Smith hasn't fought Badu Jack. Right? Callum Smith hasn't fought Carl Froch. Right? But all I'm saying is, while the people around you are looking at historical fights, when George Groves had two good shoulders, you now know he only has one good shoulder. The other surgically repaired. Folks, it'll take Groves some time to get confidence back and to forget about that surgery. You and I know that. Right? So, to sum up, I feel Canelo and George Groves are mispriced. I'm personally expecting Canelo to get stopped. Right? The way I'm playing that is the under 11 and a half rounds. By the way, I cannot believe the high over-under on the fight. A guy just failed two drug tests. <laughs> He might not come close to having the punch resistance or stamina. Right? The bet I like in that fight is the under 11 and a half, hedged with Golovkin simply to win. If Golovkin gets the knockout, as I suspect, in the first 11 and a half rounds of that fight, you win both halves of the bet. I believe George Groves is mispriced. Right? Look, I know he's a warrior. Trust me, I followed Groves' career for years. I know he's a warrior. Sometimes that works against you. Sometimes that leads you to believe that having an arm pop out the socket is no big deal. Right? Maybe Groves is the kind of guy who's walking around saying, yeah, you know, it was a minor injury. Just a minor injury that I required surgery for. Just a minor injury that rendered the arm unusable in the 12th round of the Chris Eubank fight. 
right? My current play, my updated play, with a nod to John Maynard Keynes, right? My updated play based on new information. Is Callum Smith the underdog to win the fight? I don't even have to be provocative there. He's the underdog. I'm getting good odds. I'm getting better than even money odds. Callum Smith simply to win the fight. Hedged with the over. Why? Because I'm not sure if George Groves is going to be in a position to set up a knockout. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.